On this week's episode, we're making Singapore-style braised pork belly, a dish that's popular all across Southeast Asia. In Singapore, they put their own little twist on it. It's a combination of several relatively simple flavors that just works out to be this beautiful velvety braised pork belly. For this dish, you're gonna need eggs, jasmine rice, water, sugar, soy sauce, rice wine vinegar, garlic, cinnamon, cloves, and star anise. When you're looking for pork bellies, uh, there's a few different cuts that you can get for one, um, but you definitely want to get them uncured um, so that you have some versatility in how you season, how you season and flavor it. Um, this one uh, is fresh, there's, there's no, it's not smoked, it's not brined, it's not salted, anything like that. And uh, you know, check the sell by date, you know, this one's fresh. You can also look at the color of it. Uh, it should still be kind of uh, pinkish, um, have that nice sort of flesh tone to it. Uh, if it's starting to get kind of brown, um, it's getting a little bit older, um, so watch out for that. And um, obviously, you know, you can give it a little whiff. You know, just smell it, make sure it smells great. It shouldn't feel, you know, slimy or sticky, maybe just a, you know, a little bit moist. And um, also another thing when you're looking for uh, pork bellies for braising, um, you want to look for the piece that's got the most meat. So if you can get a package that's really, really meaty, that's great. You know, watch out for you know something like this where you're starting to get a little bit less meat and a lot more fat. Uh, while that might be fine for making bacon, right? Because that's typically what bellies are used for. Um, it's not that wonderful when you're planning on braising it and, and eating it whole. Um, so watch out for that. This piece, uh, maybe I'll just turn it into bacon. These two, perfect for braising. Now, you'll notice that um, even on the real meaty pieces, there still is you know, quite a bit of fat. Oh, this is pretty nice. There's a lot of meat there. Um, but I can trim off some of the fat. Also, on all three of these pieces, right, there's uh, skin. Well, this one, there's only half of it's covered by skin. Uh, but these other two pieces, you know, they have uh, skin running all across the back. And, you know, depending on how you like your pork belly, you might like the skin on, or you might like to take it off. If you take it off, then you get to decide, well, what do you want to do with it? Do you want to render it down and just extract the fat for cooking with, you know, make your own lard? Or would you like to dry it out and fry it and make your own pork rinds, chicharrones, right? And that's another wonderful uh, use for it. Um, you could garnish your braised pork belly dish with chicharrones, right? The pork rinds. So that's another wonderful use for it. And you know, something that's nice, you know, when you buy things, you know, more in their whole intact form, uh, you get to use all of the parts, right? If you get it all the, trimmed down all the way, yeah, you're kind of limited in what you can do with it. So, Pork belly is great for making bacon. Obviously, you would want to cure that. Some people like to do a wet brine. Um, I like to do a dry brine uh, so that you get a much more crisp, firm product. It doesn't take as long to cook. It doesn't splatter in the pan. A lot of uh, commercial bacon um, that you find in retail markets has been brined. So when you cook it, there's a lot of water uh, coming off. It splatters quite a bit and it takes a while to get it crispy. Brining is um, soaking the meat in a uh, water, salt, and sugar mixture, and sometimes other spices and flavors. And the purpose of that is to make the meat really moist uh, and the salt uh, can also preserve it. And you know, between the salt and the sugar, they're adding quite a bit of flavor. Um, and if you put other spices, garlic, you know, black pepper, herbs, things like that in it, then you get flavor penetration as well. A lot of people like to brine turkeys for Thanksgiving, which is not a bad idea. You know, it makes a pretty moist product. Um, I don't think brining uh, for bacon is a particularly good idea, so I usually skip that step. 
And obviously, if you were going to braise the meat, um, like we're going to do today, um, you don't really need to brine the meat at all because you're going to cook it in a liquid. So that, that would be kind of a waste of time. Um, these nice meaty pieces like this are great for braising. Um, Koreans also like to slice them really thin and uh, just grill them. Um, so there are a lot of different things you can do with pork belly other than just make bacon, right? You could slice it thin and grill it, or you could braise it. And uh, the flavors that you put in the pan when you're braising it um, can be vary from you know Asian flavors um, to you know European flavors. I've even had you know barbecue pork belly. So there's a lot of interesting things you can do with it. Now, uh, when I braise it, I like to take the skin off, and um, and I do that on most preparations for pork belly anyway, even if I'm grilling it. And then once I get the skin off, um, you can render it and then fry it. When you render it, you're just basically cooking it at a low temperature so that uh, you can get all of the fat out. And then I save that fat and, you know, it's lard. So instead of buying lard, you know, just make my own lard. And that lard I can use uh, to cook other dishes in, in particular pork dishes. Gives me a little bit more flavor. Uh, I'm going to cut the skin off. So you know, it's almost like filleting a fish. You know, when you get the, I'm trying to get the skin off of it. And I'll even take, you know, a little bit of fat with it. And you can decide how much fat you want to leave on or how much you want to take off. I don't usually like to leave too much fat there. Braised pork belly is more about the meat. There's a little bit of skin over here too. Save all that. One of my favorite dishes to make with uh, the pork skin is um, once you make the pork rinds, make a uh, dipping sauce for it. And I had that a lot in Thailand and I really, really like it. All right. Get all that nice lard for cooking with. And I'll just continue trimming all of these up. This is a nice, smooth, straight piece. Decent amount of meat streaking throughout it. It's not bad at all. Do the same thing. Let's get that skin out. Right, so I like to grab onto the skin and just pull on it as I'm using a sawing motion back and forth. And it's just like taking the skin off of a fillet of fish. There we go, got a nice long strip. And then you can decide if you want to take some of this fat off. I think I might just, maybe I'll take off just a little bit here. Not too much. It's pretty close to meat there and I don't want to lose any of that. Okay. All right, let's go braise this. We're back in the kitchen. We're ready to start cooking. We've got some fresh pork belly and all the ingredients to turn it into this wonderful Singapore style braised pork belly. We're gonna start with a little bit of sesame oil. A nice hot pan. Add the pork belly. We're going to let that sear on both sides until it's nice and golden brown. The key here is to be patient. When you put it in the pan, it takes about a minute before the meat will release from the pan. If you try to move it too soon, it sticks. So just be patient and wait. 
Once it gets nice and golden brown, it will release itself from the pan and it's very easy to uh, flip it over and get it golden brown on the other side. So pork belly, if you're looking at it uh, for the first time, um, you might recognize it though. Um, it's bacon. Uh, bacon is just cured smoked pork belly. You'll find this in markets in the fresh meat section. Sometimes it's whole, sometimes it's uh, pre-cut like this, but either way you want it relatively thick. This is in about two inch thick wide strips, running about 12 inches long. on a little nice golden brown color and we'll flip it over. So now that we got a nice crisp brown crust all the way around the pork belly, and set it aside. We're going to get rid of all the fat it was rendered out of the bellies, and you can save that for uh, cooking all sorts of other delicious things in. All right, and we'll return the pork belly to the pan. Gonna add a cinnamon stick, one star anise, and four cloves. We're also going to add a head of garlic. Just split that in half. Add enough water to cover the meat by about halfway up. Rice wine. and soy sauce, and about two tablespoons of sugar. We'll crank the heat back up, and we'll bring this to a boil. The cooking technique for pork belly is braising, which requires long, slow, gentle cooking process. Um, if you keep it nice, and slow and low, uh, the meat will be very tender when it's done. If you try to rush it and boil it, uh, the meat tends to come out kind of tough. So it's, it's a wonderful technique um, for making tough cuts of meat become tender, but uh, it requires a little bit of patience. Once the meat comes to a boil, reduced to a simmer, You'll cover the pot with a lid. You want the heat really, really low. And we're going to let that cook for about two to two and a half hours until the meat is very tender. I like to put a little hole in the top which helps release some of the pressure um, and it helps keep the temperature nice and low. All right, so now we're going to prepare the rice. We have some uh, jasmine rice. I'm going to add it to the pot. And for every cup of r jasmine rice that you're cooking, 
you're going to need one and a half cups of water. We'll start with cold water. And we're going to bring it to a boil. Give it a little stir just to make sure that all the rice is well hydrated. Once the rice comes to a boil, we're going to reduce the heat to a simmer. Cover with a lid. And let that slowly cook for about 20 minutes. After the rice is cooked for 20 minutes, we're going to turn off the heat and set the pot aside. You want to let the rice finish cooking for the next five minutes off the heat. Just because we've turned off the heat doesn't mean that the rice is done. We need to make sure that it's finished, the process. If you open it right now, you'll find that the rice uh, is usually still a little bit uh, too firm in the center. So after letting it sit for five minutes, the rice cools off just a little bit, absorbs the rest of the moisture, and you'll find that it's uh, much more tender. You won't get any of those gritty little pieces that uh, you find sometimes in rice that hasn't been cooked all the way. Uh, plus, you know, after it's set for five minutes, we can flake it apart um, if you like your, your rice to be nice and loose. Now we're going to prepare the uh, soft boiled eggs uh, for the uh, pork belly. And what you'll need for this is a large pot of water. Bring it to a full boil and then using either a spoon or a pair of tongs, gently place each egg into the bottom of the pot. If you drop the eggs in, they have a tendency to crack very easily. So by placing them gently with a pair of tongs, we help to ensure that the eggs are less likely to break. Once you have all the eggs in, turn the heat off and cover with a lid. We're going to leave it for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, uh, then we'll pull the eggs out, let them cool off, and peel them. All right, so the eggs have been cooking for 10 minutes. It's time to remove the lid. We'll pull the eggs from the water and drop them into an ice bath. I'm going to put them in an ice bath so that they cool off really quickly to stop the cooking so that they don't get cooked any further and also to uh, cool them off a little bit so that you can start peeling them. Right, so I like to peel them over a paper towel so that I can discard all the shells along with the paper towel. If it's still a little hot while you're handling it, once you've cracked it a little bit, it exposes more of the, uh, the flesh and you can uh, drop it into, back into the ice bath and it'll cool off really rapidly. And you can come back and finish peeling it. But either way, the peel should come off pretty easily. Right. Once the eggs are peeled, you can put them into the pot with the pork braising. And what will happen is all of the wonderful flavors of the pork are going to infuse uh, the egg. And you'll get this nice color on the outside of the egg and all of this flavors and aromas. And we'll just leave that in there for a, a few minutes just before we uh, finish uh, preparing the dish. Oh. The pork belly is nice and tender now. And we can shut off the heat, pull out the eggs and the meat, we'll set those aside. And like most braises, the liquid that the meat has been braising in is going to be used as a sauce for the meat. So we'll put the liquid back on the heat and turn it up and let it get nice and hot. We want to reduce that liquid 
until it is very flavorful and thick enough to be, to be a sauce to place over the top of the meat. I'm going to cover the meat and the eggs and set that aside so that it stays nice and warm while the sauce reduces. All right, so the rice has been sitting aside for five minutes after cooking. And we can come back with a fork and flake it apart so that it's nice and loose and ready to serve. that all flaked apart. We can set that aside. Put a little damp towel underneath my cutting board so it doesn't slide around while I'm cutting. I've got some chives. I'm going to cut them very thinly on the bias you know, at an angle so I get long diagonal slices. I also have some fresh cilantro and I picked off the, the largest stems and just leave the small short ones. And for plate up, we'll take a little bit of the rice. pork belly, which is now barely holding together. It is so tender. Take several slices of that. And place that over the rice. Some of the egg. And some of the sauce from braising right over the top of the pork belly. Garnish with the chopped chives. Some fresh cilantro. and toasted sesame seeds. Singapore braised pork belly.